Hey, functional bodybuilders. I'm here to talk to you about the GHD, which is the name of the machine, and the movement is the sit-up. So the GHD sit-up. GHD stands for Glute Ham Developer. So this tool and this machine is really designed for developing the backside of your leg with protocols that have you facing the ground. But a number of years ago, a coach uh, introduced the world to the sit-up on this machine and it is a very, very potent abdominal, rectus abdominal and hip flexor uh, exercise that needs to be approached with caution. So I wanna talk a little bit about how you might set it up and then when you might wanna approach it if you're in some of our training programs and you see GHD sit-ups in the uh, prescription. We often will put GHD sit-ups right next to the option to do a traditional anchored sit-up on the floor. An anchored sit-up at some point becomes, starts to feel, oh, I feel very confident in this. I want something that might be more challenging. So let me talk to you about how this is more challenging, some of the drawbacks of it, and what you want to be careful of. First and foremost, the setup. When I get into the GHD for a GHD sit-up, what I would like you to think about is most machines like this have the option of moving this foot plate forwards and backwards for different heights, uh, of athletes. For, for the sit-up, what I like to think about is just underneath where your gluteal muscles connect to your hamstrings, there's kind of a little shelf. I want you to think about that little shelf sitting right at the apex of this pad. Most of these machines have a, a circular pad like this, so that's what you want to be aiming for. I know the setting, the number setting here, this has some really uh, you know, nice uh, number uh, features on it to remind me where to put it if somebody moves it, but I'm a number 10. So from here, I'm, I'm, I'm at the right distance from the pad. If you have options to adjust these, you want to make them very tight and secure. You don't want your feet sliding out too easily. You want to feel like your, uh, the pads are kind of putting a little bit of pressure onto the top of your shin. All right, from here, then the sit-up is performed going back and up. Now, as I said before, this is a, a very, very potent abdominal exercise. Uh, countless stories of people I've coached in the past where they see, oh, there's 50 sit-ups in a workout. Hey, I'm gonna do 50 GHD sit-ups. They do 50 GHD sit-ups and they wake up for the next three days and they have a hard time coughing, laughing, even speaking, you know, sitting up out of bed because they're so incredibly sore. Why is that? Well, because this takes you through a very big range of motion. As it has been seen for many, many years, the full range of motion for a GHD sit-up would be hands on the pad, go all the way back down, hands on the floor. And as you can see in this hands on the floor position, I'm in a very, very extended spine position, which is stretching the abdominal muscles dramatically. And then on the way up, I'm closing that gap and flexing. It's not a very good leverage point. Your abdominals, those rectus abdominals, that takes them through a very dramatic range of motion. And that is how it can become, uh, it can break down the muscle tissue a lot and create a ton of soreness and soreness that is not fun. And you shouldn't be approaching it like that. If you, if you wanna go and suffer and have a lot of pain, by all means, go do 100 GHD sit-ups for time. But I think there's a smarter way and that's building up to it and also seeing that there's a range of motion in question that could be more appropriate. So if a sit-up is performed to the floor to a horizontal position, then you could start by doing just horizontal or parallel range of motion GHD sit-ups. That would be my first recommendation. And the technique on this is that when I go back since my legs are anchored, if I flex my quadricep muscles, that is actually part of what's gonna help bring me back up into a seated position. Because one of these quadricep muscles crosses the hip joint, it is helping me flex my hip up, and my abdominals are getting work as well. More of an isometric work, which is fine to start with. Once you wanna graduate from that, then my next recommendation is not to go all the way to the floor, but keep your arms across your chest. And if this is parallel, you're gonna to start to practice going into a little bit of extension. So that's just past till you feel the pad on your low back and right back up. 
this is the end of that range of motion. Now notice that this end is very, very different than this end. And that's where I want you to start. So if I'm doing a workout that's got sit-ups in it and I don't wanna get too much crazy soreness to my abdominals and I don't wanna risk any tweaks in my back, I will perform my DHT sit-ups just like this. I'm going past parallel, keeping my arms here. I'm still in a flex position with my spine and I'm using those quads and a great isometric contraction of my abdominals to get the, to the work done. Now, the last thing I'll say is, if you want to progress to that full GHD sit-up position, which is absolutely your choice to do, one thing to be mindful of is that when you go into big extension and then right into flexion, extension, flexion, under load, which this is absolutely a loaded position. When you're flexed and extended in load, similar to doing a deadlift, if you are deadlifting and you're rounding and then extending and rounding and extending, this creates a lot of shear force on the spine. And it is not a recommended safe position to be in if you're doing things at high speed or under high load. It's not a problem to flex and extend your spine. It's part of life. We all do it. You know, it's the Jefferson curl that we practice, but we practice that very light and controlled. If you're doing a GHD sit up and it's happening fast and then you're under fatigue, then doing a lot of extension into flexion might be problematic. So it's just a caution to tell you that that is what we're trying to avoid. If you're, ex if you're new to this exercise and you wanna go do a lot of repetitions and you're going to the full range of motion and then into flexion, you might be setting yourself up for some uh, low back uh, discomfort, pain, and in the worst case scenario, injury. Now all of this can be built up over time. You can build a very resilient position in the GHD sit-up if you take your time and you practice some of those ranges of motions that I showed you, uh, but just be mindful. So let's say GHD sit-ups show up in your workout. You want to uh, level up your, your anchored or your regular sit-up that you typically do, then maybe do three sets of regular sit-ups and one set of GHD rather than all four on the GHD. Or if it calls for 20 GHD sit-ups, start with 10 and do the modified range of motion. Wake up the next day, check to see how much pain and soreness you have, and then you can build up from there. Don't try and be a hero with this exercise. It's a great tool. I encourage you to use it, but don't get ahead of yourself, and then you'll be sorry tomorrow and the next day. If you got questions on the GHD sit-up, please drop them in the comments below. I hope this helped. See you next time.